Malcolm Green Chase, March 12, 1875 to July 16, 1955, was an American financier and textile industrialist who was instrumental in bringing electric power to New England. He was a pioneer of the sport of ice hockey in the United States and was Yale University's first hockey captain. He was also an amateur tennis player whose highest ranking was U.S. No. 3 in 1895. <laughs> <laughs> Personal life Chase was born March 12, 1875 in Central Falls, Rhode Island into the illustrious Chase family. Malcolm's great-grandfather Oliver Chase was a textile mill owner, whose company later became Berkshire Hathaway. His grandmother was anti-slavery activist Elizabeth Buffum Chase. His parents were Brown University Chancellor Arnold Buffum Chase and Eliza Green Chase. His son, Malcolm Green Chase Jr. and grandson Malcolm Green Chase III also became directors of Berkshire Hathaway. Chase attended Brown, but transferred to Yale and graduated from Yale's Sheffield Scientific School in 1896, attaining some fame as a tennis player at both schools. He lived for some time in Providence, Rhode Island, but spent the last ten years of his life at 60 Sutton Place in New York City and at his summer home in Hyannis, Massachusetts. Chase's first wife Elizabeth Edwards died in 1947. His second wife Kathleen Dunster, outlived him. He had two sons Malcolm Green Chase Jr. and Arnold B. Chase III and three daughters. Tennis career Malcolm played for both Brown and Yale while still a student. When he graduated from Yale in 1896, he also retired from tennis, but not before setting a record by winning the U.S. intercollegiate singles and doubles titles for three consecutive years 1893 In July 1894 he won the Tuxedo Tournament in New York defeating Clarence Hobart in the final in five sets. He successfully defended his title the following year when he was victorious against future seven time U.S. Championship winner Bill Land in straight sets. Chase won the U.S. National Doubles Championship in 1895 and was a doubles finalist in 1896, in both cases partnering compatriot Robert Wren. In singles, he reached the semi-finals in 1894 and the quarter-finals in 1895 and 1900. Chase was inducted in the International Tennis Hall of Fame in 1961. <laughs> Grand Slam Finals Topic Doubles One title, one runner up. Topic Ice hockey. According to his obituary in the Providence Journal, Chase is credited with having been the father of hockey in the United States. In 1892, visiting Niagara Falls, New York for a tennis match, he met some Canadian hockey players. Chase put together a team of men from Yale, Brown, and Harvard, and toured all the way across Canada as captain of this team. In 1896, Chase was captain of Yale's ice hockey team, and on February 14, 1896, played in the first intercollegiate hockey match in the United States against Johns Hopkins University at Baltimore's North Avenue rink. Yale won the game, 2-1, and both goals were scored by Chase. To honor Chase, Yale created an award in his name, and in 1998 created the position of Malcolm G. Chase head hockey coach. Tim Taylor was the first Yale coach to serve with this title. 
A portrait of Chase hangs in the Schley room at Ingalls Rink. Topic: Industrial career. Topic: Electric power. Shortly after graduating college, Chase became associated with the introduction of electric power to New England. By 1910 he formed the firm of Chase & Harriman, which built a 24,000-kilowatt power plant on the Connecticut River near Brattleboro, Vermont. Eventually Chase helped develop the New England Power Association and in 1926 he gained control of the Narragansett Electric Lighting Company. In his obituary, the Providence Journal said Chase had been one of the most influential men in the development of electric power in the Northeast. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Textile Mills. In 1926, Chase formed the Berkshire Fine Spinning Associates, Inc., the largest producer of fine cotton goods in the United States. It had mills in Albion, Warren, Antony, and Fall River. This company later became known as Berkshire Hathaway. He was also president of the Fort Dummer Textile Mill in Brattleboro, Vermont. Oil tankers After World War II, Chase built a fleet of tankers to transport oil to New England. It was the largest independent oil tanker fleet in the U.S. <laughs> Death and burial Chase died July 16, 1955, aged 80, at his summer home in Hyannis, Massachusetts, and is buried at Swan Point Cemetery in Providence, Rhode Island. 